All right, let's talk about the H-1B visa situation, the 100K fee. I was originally gonna just answer my DMs in Slack because I got like 10 messages from my uh, employees this morning, uh, all different personal DMs asking me about my thoughts, my concerns, what does it mean? And so I just figured I'd write or I'd shoot this video, not just for them, but also for uh, anybody that's listening, anybody that cares, right? So I don't think my opinion will matter to too many people, but I do think there's prospect clients out there that are, are curious about it and want to hear my thoughts. So I'd, I'd rather just uh, put it in a video because I don't have any too crazy thoughts, but I'll let you decide. So my first thoughts are why 100K? I wrote about this my LinkedIn if you want to go check it out. But and if you want to comment on my LinkedIn post, by the way, I can write back to you and engage. Uh, that's probably the best way to do it. I'll check my LinkedIn more than my YouTube channel. But why 100k is the first thought that comes to mind. Because if the argument that the H1B program was being abused is true, and I'll talk about that in a second, I do wonder why 100k? Why not 50k? Why not 30k? And it's funny, because somebody wrote on that post, they were like, well, you're looking for logic from politicians. And I'm like, fair, I don't know if they did a, a whole data model data analysis in order to determine, you know, what's the what's the right number. And so I thought that was actually a pretty, pretty wise comment there. Because, you know, at the end of the day, if there is some sort of abuse going on, and the goal is to put some friction, which is totally understandable, in my opinion, then why price it at 100k? Because 100k seems to eliminate basically 99% of people that are going to be eligible for the H1B visa. Now, the thing is, that's probably what they wanted. So my question is, why? Why that extreme? Or is it because Trump and his administration think, hey, we're not going to be in office? Office in two years or three years, whenever the, del the the change in presidency is. And so let's go ahead and let's be as extreme as possible now. That's a possibility. I don't know. This is me speculating. So that was my first thought. Like, why 100K? I, I got to question that. The second thought I had is, well, similar to a chess game, every reaction has a reaction. Every move has a, a move against it, right? You have to think about game theory, right? If I make a business move, I have to know my competitors are going to have a reaction to that. And I'll have a reaction to their reaction, etc. So how will companies react to the fact that they can't get quote unquote cheaper labor? Um, that's an interesting one to me because I can see it going two ways. Number one, I can see them simply just not hiring because they're like, well, this ROI doesn't make sense anymore. Or I can see them doing exactly what Trump is intending them to do and hire American workers. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm not saying one is good. I just question the premise of like, hey, are the big tech companies hiring people on H1B solely because because they're 20% cheaper, or are they hiring them because they're 20% cheaper and 10 times better engineers? I think that's the nuance that we're missing. And so if companies do stop hiring because they literally cannot find a talent at the bar that they're looking for, then do companies in the US just suffer more? than the actual H-1B holders themselves. So that's something something I thought about as well. And so that's where it's like, okay, companies are gonna have a reaction to this. So. The other thoughts I had, and this is a little more meta, but the other thoughts I had is this isn't a new problem. And I think that's where like, you see a lot of noise on social media, but like this problem, if you want to call it a problem, this problem of immigration and this problem of, you know, keeping people outside our walls, et cetera, has been a thing since the Roman Empire, right? And like, if you if you study the Roman Empire, and I know I'm gonna go, <laughs> I'm gonna be one of these Roman Empire bros, but if you study the Roman Empire, they literally had slaves imported into their walls, kept everybody else out, and then made it a criteria later on that, hey, the only way you can actually enter into our, you know, place is by going to war for us, by doing the jobs that nobody else wanted to do. Sounds kind of similar, right? But I thought that was interesting because it kind of reminds you of like, hey, there is no solution per se to this problem, right? Someone's always going to be upset. And it's not a solution to be arrived to. It's a problem to be managed, right? It's a dichotomy to be managed, not a problem to be fixed. And so I thought that was super interesting when you look back on it on history, because the question is like, if you ask like, hey, was that move good for the Roman empires, for the Roman empire, when they started bringing in people, you know, uh, from the outside to go to war for them? Well, the question is, what do you define as good? 
good. If you look at the fall of the Roman Empire, it's like, well, eventually it all ended up bad, right? And so it kind of reminds me of this story of like, hey, well, you know, this kid goes into town with the donkey and everybody's like, yay, that's a, an amazing thing. Then the kid gets on the donkey, falls and breaks his leg. And it's like, oh my God, the donkey was a bad thing. Then the the army drafts all the kids and everybody's like, oh my God, the donkey's a good, a good thing again because the, the kid was able to avoid the army because he had fallen and broken his leg. And it goes on and on and on and on. And the question is like, oh, okay, well, you know, is the donkey good or bad? We don't know because the effects of the donkey go on and on and on and on many times over, right? And so it's kind of the same thing here. It's like, we don't actually know if it's good or bad. I'll give you the devil's advocate of this, which is like, hey, well, you know, we were, what is it? Companies had to sponsor visas and had to pay, I don't know, anywhere between one and 20 grand, I believe it was. And so the question now is, well, why not zero, right? And if it was zero, would that program have been massively abused by 10x multiple? So it was one in 20, the right move. And so it's very interesting to me because again, I don't know if there's a right answer. I think this is something to be managed, not something to be solved. And I know that whatever decision is made or whatever the number for the fee is, you know, there's always going to be people that are happy. There's always going to be people that are upset. Like that's just always the case. And so I do wonder I, what I wish the government would do and what the Trump administration would do is release the data. I think this would be a cool data project because I do think that, you know, hoping that there was logic in their decision, hoping there's logic in politicians, I think is always interesting. I don't know if that's ever going to be the case, but you know, it would be good to see the data. I'll finish this video by saying a few things on what I think is going to happen. So first off, I'll tell you what I know. So as the CEO of Data Engineer Academy, I know that it is harder for Visa folks to get a job than American folks. Most companies don't want to sponsor. Big tech companies do. Most companies don't. So I know that for a fact, like statistically proven, I can verify that anybody that is less than H1B, F1, OPT, etc., they have a really hard time finding a job. 100% true. Now, anybody that is a H1B, assuming they have a lot of tech skills, they'll have an easier time, but they still won't have an easier time than Americans. So they'll be kind of in the middle. You know, that is why when when Trump and the administration say, "Hey, this H1B program was being abused. It's like, okay, well, I, I I don't fully doubt that because we've seen how hard it is to get them a job. So maybe the imbalance occurred over the last couple of years where there is more people than jobs available. And in a way, we're kind of just making life on hell for the people that came here with the expectation to get a job. So in a way, I do understand this abuse part. At the same time, I still don't have enough data to say whether 100K was good or not. Um, but I'm just telling you what I know, which is that it's definitely been harder for Visa folks to get a job in the last couple of years, for sure, especially in the tech and data space. Now, what I think is gonna happen is, I do think there's gonna be a few years, a window, where American workers will be able to uh, get a job easier and more competitive pay because of less competition. But I also think it's true for people on a visa that are already in the States, right? Because if you are already in the States, then you actually don't have to pay that fee, right? Or companies don't have to pay that fee because it doesn't, the, the fee and the change doesn't affect people already in the States. And so with that said, I think there will be a two year span where the people that are overseas, specifically India, are going to have a hard time because they're not going to be able to come uh, as freely as they were. But then the people in the States, both Americans and people on visas are going to get jobs and, you know, kind of what Trump is saying, there's going to be, you know, jobs returned to the Americans, quote unquote, right. And the thing is, I think by the time we see the ripple effects of this, call it one, two, three years, I think something like this is just going to get overturned again, right? When the new presidency comes into action, I think this 100K visa will go back down. I don't know if it's 30K, 20K, 10K, I don't know. But the reason I bring this up is because, yes, I think there will be a little bit of short-term pain for a couple people and a little bit of short-term gain for a couple people. But in the long term, I think it's a a, a non-event, more or less. And I, I don't I hate to call it a non-event because I know there's a lot of people that are anxious and, and probably going to be anxious for the next year or two. But I'm always trying to think long-term. And when I think long-term, 10 years out, 20 years out, I'm like, okay, I don't think this is this is going to be the main topic of uh, discussion again, because again, I do think this is a problem to be managed, not necessarily something to be solved, because if the Roman Empire has dealt with it a very, very long time ago, I think we'll be dealing with it for the next hundred years as well. So I know this is a video of me probably saying nothing, but uh, I just wanted to give it to you real. So hopefully you enjoyed this. All right. Cheers, guys.